time any state senator on record on this issue. That was the design of that plan, to keep state senators off the record. Please contact your state senator, find out who they are, get them on the record. And now I'd like to read to you something that I had had prepared for the, uh, the first debate on this matter before the House of Representatives. I will. Uh, I would like to read to you a speech that I had had prepared for my, my fellow members of the House, which I was not able to deliver. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, well, I'm not addressing the Speaker, but fellow members, it has now come time for us to consider whether or not the state of New Hampshire will continue the prohibition of cannabis or end it. This experiment in prohibition has been ongoing for some eight decades, wherein millions of peaceful individuals have been robbed, caged, and extorted for nothing more than the possession of a plant. This war we have waged on cannabis has proven itself to be wildly costly to both the victims and the taxpayers. It has ruined the lives of so many individuals, families, and communities by denying them food, fuel, fiber, medicine, and numerous other things that the cannabis plant may provide. I see this as an absolute travesty and abject failure of the institution of government and this legislature to protect the rights to property and to pursue happiness. In truth, the war on cannabis is not a war on a plant, but a war on people. Ultimately, however, the specific question of this bill, House Bill 656, is not about prohibition, but rather a question of the proper role of government. I appeal to part the first of our Constitution, Article 2, which describes our natural rights. All men have certain natural, essential, and inherent rights, among which are the enjoying and defending of life and liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and in a word, of seeking and obtaining happiness. Furthermore, Part 1st, Article 4 reads, among, these, uh, among the natural rights, some are in their very na nature unalienable, because no equivalent can be given or received for them. Of this kind are the rights of conscience. I further submit that there is a deeper innate natural right of all mankind to make use of and work the land in any way they see fit for their benefit, and that no government has the authority to render null the exercise of this right. Some members have concerns regarding the federal law concerning cannabis. I might remind the members that while we are in a union with the several states, we are dutifully bound to respect Part First, Article 7 of our Constitution, which reads, the people of this state have the sole and exclusive right of governing themselves as a free, sovereign, and independent state, and do and forever hereafter shall exercise and enjoy every power, jurisdiction, and right pertaining thereto, which is not or may not hereafter be by them expressly delegated to the United States of America and Congress assembled. The people of New Hampshire no longer wish to continue this war in accordance with the edicts of the federal government. To vote for its prolongation in accordance with the, their edicts is to deny the people of New Hampshire the right to self-govern. I am compelled to ask this legislature, given the constraints of our Constitution and the powers we are granted, if it is our role to dictate to free individuals what they may or may not grow or consume in their gardens. It is, our role to imp uh, is it our role to imprison these individuals who have not caused any harm to others or created a victim at the expense of the taxpayer? Is it our role to prevent the establishment of a commercial market for this valuable agricultural commodity, an industry which has the potential to revitalize the rural agrarian segment of New Hampshire's economy? I do not see any justification by our Constitution or otherwise for these actions of government. We must seriously reconsider whether or not it is a legitimate and rightful role of our government to enforce the prohibition of a commodity. It is our duty as legislators, as members of this court, to exact and defend the Constitution and these precious rights of our constituents. If we discover among the laws, prior edicts, which we find to be destructive to these rights, we ought to abolish them or revise them so as to respect them. I urge you, fellow members, to cast your vote against the recommendation of the committee. Thank you. I urge you all today, when you return to your homes,
Contact your legislators. Tell them how you feel. Let them know what you know. Let them know that it is not their role to interfere in your personal life. Thank you. And I would like to, I'd like to introduce a candidate for state senate, uh, Carla Garrick. You're up next. Thank you, Caleb. Hi, guys. Welcome to another rally where our rights have still not been restored. I kind of like his ideas about looking to the New Hampshire Constitution and saying, here in New Hampshire, we're allowed to do what we want. Fuck you, feds. <laughs> Um, briefly, my name is Carla Garrick. Um, I used to be the president of the Free State Project. I'm a free stater. Um, I am here to take over the state and leave you the hell alone. I believe that every single person here is personally responsible for their own lives. That means you take care of you, I take care of me, and if we want to work together voluntarily, we'll take care of each other. But we can't be forced by the hand of the government to do good to others. We should do it because it's in our hearts and we know it's in our hearts because we're stoners. Yeah. I'm running for Senate in District 20, that's Manchester and Gosstown, Wards 3, 4, 10 and 11. I'm obviously pro pot. As my sign over there says, I'm also pro-gun and anti-war. If you don't understand what that means, come talk to me and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. You know, it's a funny thing that as people have finally become free to study the forbidden drugs the drugs we weren't allowed to look at even. And my father was a research ph pharmacist who studied psychedelic drugs. Uh, he does not approve of my politics, don't take that as an endorsement. But uh, he used to say to me, the thing about weed is, I don't understand why they won't let us study it. He was firmly for keeping it illegal until it was studied at least. He's a pharmacist, that's how they think. But, he said, I don't understand why they won't let us study it the way we want to. Because it was obvious, and it's been obvious, that there are beneficial components to marijuana, you know? Some people respond really well to marijuana. Some people smoke really badly. If you smoke weed, and you don't feel better than you did when you didn't smoke weed, don't smoke weed, okay? That's just, if it's not, if it's not giving you an effect that you feel is making you a happier person, don't do it. But some of us find that our, that our cannabinoid systems regulate themselves better when you take in a little bit of weed. Or maybe we're just a little bit wilder, or a little bit more spontaneous. Think about all of the music that came out of the 1960s and ask yourself how much of that music would ever have been made if it weren't for psychedelic drugs and cannabis. I was so I claim my oh, First okay. Amendment right so to produce art I stayed by up there, consuming so I didn't cannabis well, or whatever yeah, other awesome. chemical I may choose to imbibe so that I can express what I need to express. I'll never be Jim Morrison. I I'm way over 27. <laughs> I remember how clean everything was before they invented dirt. <laughs> But, uh, and that's what I do when I lose track of the thought. Back to the 60s! Back to the 60s! We have a right to produce whatever art, whatever rhetoric, and to have it pieced together to sound coherent in post-production. <laughs> okay, somebody take over this thing. I got wicked cottonmouth pros. How about you, Rick? You know, I love 